Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll be learning about mesh analysis of AC circuits. So we'll start with an example. Let's see the example. We have to obtain uh, the equation for the two currents I1 and I2 in the given circuit using mesh analysis. So as we already learned, we have to convert into phasor form. So from the given voltage um, signal, the omega is 10 raised to the power 3, that is omega is 100,000, uh, sorry 1000. We convert the capacitors into phasor form which comes to be minus J2. So this is J divided by omega C. Similarly, 4 millihenry inductor J omega L comes to be J4. So this is now the phasor circuit, phasor equivalent circuit and we have now two meshes, mesh uh, with current I1 and mesh with current I2. So we write the equations around mesh 1, we start from here, so minus 10, 3 I1 and here it is J4 I1 minus J4 I2. Uh, in the um, circuit 1 we used to write this as J4 bracket I1 minus I2 but you can write it directly that first of all you write all the terms that are related to uh, current I1 and then you write the terms related to I2 with a negative sign. And now grouping, this becomes the first group, or first equation around mass 1. And similarly, for mass 2, we are writing all the terms that are with I2. So J4 I2 minus J2 I2 plus this is already given as 2I, 2I1. And then we go for the I1 terms minus J4 I1. So this is another way of writing but if you are more comfortable with writing I1 minus I2 and I2 minus I1 you can write that and you will get the same answer. Now we have grouped the two equations into their like terms so we will just write the determinant uh, form and from determinant we can find delta, delta 1, delta 2 to find the uh, current. So first of all we are finding uh, delta, so multiplying these two, subtracting these two and solving we find delta to be 16.12 angle 60.25. So this is delta. Now for delta 1 we replace the first column with the value 10 and 0 and for, for delta 2 we will replace the second column with this value. So for delta 1 we are replacing the first column and solving we find delta 1. Similarly for delta 2 we replace this uh, second column with 10 and 0 and we find an answer and now as we have learned earlier that the current I1 will be delta 1 over delta and I2 will be delta 2 over delta so putting the values and solving we get the two uh, currents I1 and I2 in phasor form and now we can very easily convert them into the time domain. So 1.24, 1.24 cosine 10 raised to the power 3t and we put the angle here and similarly for the second current. Another example, now in this circuit we have to find this current I0 uh, 
uh, which is the current in the loop number two but in opposite direction so three loops we identify this is loop one current i1 i3 and i2 so applying kvl to mesh number one this mesh we write all the terms that are with i1 so 8 plus j10 minus j2 equals i1 then we write all the terms which are related with the other current so it is with a minus sign so minus minus j2 i2 there is a mistake here this should be um, there should be a minus sign here and then minus j10 i3 minus j10 i3 similarly for mesh 2 this is mesh 2 we write all that are related to i2 so minus j2 minus j2 again minus j2 minus j2 4 4 and i2 so this is with the terms with i2 then we might uh, subtract all the other terms which are uh, due to other currents so minus minus j2 i1 so minus minus j2 i1 this was one term this is also sharing with i3 so minus minus j2 i3 and then finally we write the uh, voltage source also in this now we coming on to mesh number 3 so this is mesh 3 since it has a current source so there is no need of writing an equation we just write i3 equals to the current source so i3 is equal to 5 ampere now we need to solve these uh, three equations so putting the value of i3 since i3 is 5 ampere in equation 1 and equation 2 we get uh, two equations which are only in terms of I1 and I2. So these are the two equations that we got in terms of I1 and I2 and now we can solve with the help of a matrix. So putting in the matrix form and finding delta then delta 1 uh, sorry delta 2 because we only need to find I2 which is actually i0 in opposite direction so we just need to find delta 2 no need to find delta 1 so i2 is delta 2 over uh, delta so 6.12 angle minus 35.22 now since i0 was opposite of i2 so we put a minus sign so this is our uh, desired value so once you put a minus sign here that means you can replace the minus sign by plus 180 so plus 180 with minus 35 will make it 144 uh, degree uh, another uh, problem this i hope you can solve at your home very simple same way we this is uh, these are the three loops the third loop has a current source so the i3 is equal to uh, minus because uh, our generally we take in clockwise direction so it will be equal to minus 10 ampere and by solving these two we can find the answer i naught another one now this has four mesh one two three four but if you look carefully 
there is a current source between the two mesh and if you remember from the circuit 1 if there is a current source between two mesh this is called super mesh and the techniques for super mesh is that you remove the current source and write the equation and then you replace the current source and write another equation so we'll follow the same technique Now we, after removing the current source between the two mesh, this is the circuit. So we write the equations for the three meshes now. This is for mesh one. First of all, um, we can write it with the old techniques that we have learned in circuit one. So it is minus 10 and 8 I1 minus I3 plus minus J2 I1 minus I3. So this is the technique that we learn in circuit 1. We could also write it directly which is we'll follow now here that minus 10 all the terms that are associated with I1 so it is 8 minus J2 8 minus J2 into I1 then the terms which are shared so 8 minus with the minus sign so minus 8 uh, I3, so minus 8 I3 and minus minus J2 I2, so minus minus J2 I2 and by combining uh, the like terms together this is the final equation. Coming on to mass 2, since there is a current source already, so this current source is equal to the current in the circuit but since their directions are opposite so therefore we'll write I2 is equal to minus 3 amperes. So this is the second mesh. Now come on, coming on to the super mesh. Again we can see these two are directly related with I3. So 8 minus J4, 8 minus J4 into I3 and 8 is also related with I1. So minus 8 I1 minus 8 I1 then here G6 uh, and J5 they are directly related with the I2 so uh, I4 so J plus uh, 6 5 into I4 and J5 is also related with I2 so minus J5 I2 so this is the equation for the super mesh Again, we'll collect the like terms. And also, if you remember, in the case of a super mesh, we have to write a KCL equation at the point where it is joining. So either we write a KCL equation here, or we write a KCL equation here. It is easier to write here. So we'll write this as I4 equals, I4 is leaving, equals I, 3 and 4 ampere. So this is our second equation for the super mesh. So we now have four equations in this to solve. But uh, substituting instead of four equations we can put the value of uh, I2 in the equations and this will now become a simpler so putting the value of I2 in equation 2, I2 from equation 2 into the first equation and also putting the value of I2 and I4 in the uh, equation number 3, we get another equation. So these two equations now So uh, by simplifying we get equation 5 and equation 6 and from this now we can take help of the matrix. So we write it in terms of a matrix and find delta and delta 1. And then we can obtain the current I1 by delta 1 divided by delta. So this is the current I1. 
and since we had to find v naught this is v naught the voltage across minus j2 so it is v naught is minus j2 i1 minus i2 so putting the values of i1 and i2 we find v naught to be 9.75 angle 2 to 2.32 